In this video, you will learn to create subprocesses with our BPMN Modeler Enterprise for Confluence. As your process models grow, subprocesses help you not to get lost. You can encapsulate an arbitrary large part of the process into just one shape. The entry and exit points should always be start and end events inside the subprocess. But apart from that, you can model anything you would like in there. Subprocesses allow you to have multiple layers of abstraction. Sometimes the big picture is what you want to show, sometimes you want to focus on detail. Another reason for using subprocesses, even in smaller process models, are loops. BPMN offers an elegant way for modeling loops using subprocesses, and that's what I'm going to show you. Here we have a process diagram that deals with collecting data for a new casualty insurance. Some of the data belongs to the whole application and have to be collected just once, such as header data and payment data. But then there's also data on the level of the insured individual, like health questions, or the individual benefits package, which could differ between people too. So, if three people are going to be covered, then this information will have to be collected three times. We need some kind of loop. I could add a few gateway symbols and build that loop. However, BPMN has a more elegant way to do it, and that involves a subprocess. This is a subprocess element. I give it a suitable name. Now I move a aforementioned task into the subprocess. Conveniently, the subprocess will expand in order to fit those tasks. Of course, the subprocess needs a start event and an end event. I make some room. Now I have to integrate my subprocess into the big picture. As I said, I want my subprocess to be repeated once per covered person. Therefore, I have to click the wrench symbol. Here I can turn it into a multiple instance. This is what creates a loop. The three horizontal lines mean that the data will be collected sequentially, one after another. Think of stack processing doing one sheet of paper at a time. Another thing I can do with the wrench symbol is to collapse the subprocess. This will be useful if my process is too large for my screen. Now our subprocess nicely encapsulates everything about insured individuals. Sometimes you may want to decouple a subprocess even more and keep it in a diagram of its own. That way you could use it within multiple processes. BPMN allows for processes to refer to separate processes. The name of the element is call activity. Here is a symbol for it. Call activities look different from subprocesses in that they have a bold outline. By the way, please move your subprocess to the new process before turning it into a call activity. This is because all call activities only link a process but don't contain a process. So all my task elements are gone by now. I could click undo, of course. While calling the subprocess itself is something that has to be coded, you can use our linking feature to document the call. Open the attributes panel, add a link, choose BPMN and start typing. I have prepared a diagram to be linked elsewhere in our conference wiki. Now I click the link symbol and we get a preview of the link diagram. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions concerning our BPN model of a conference, please ask.